Okay, so we're gonna make a six degrees of freedom game in about ten minutes or less, give or take. First of all, we want to create our ship. We're gonna get game object create other sphere. That's a good one. We're gonna add a rigid body. So physics rigid body. Don't want to use gravity. We want to set the drag to ten. Sounds good. Angular drag to one. No. Five. So this is going to be a physics based one, so rather than just directly translating, we're actually going to apply a force to move and rotate as well. So once we have the rigid body done, we're going to create a folder in our project, call it prefabs, we're going to rename this ship, and we're going to drag it into prefabs. This is our ship now, right here. Now we're going to create a new folder, call it scripts. We're going to create a C sharp. You can do the same in JavaScript if you want to translate. We're going to call this ship handler. We're going to create another script called player input. I like to separate the actual handler and the input so that way later on if I feel like adding an AI rather than having to create a whole new script for the AI I can reuse the ship handler. Just replace the player input though with AI input. So first we're going to open up ship handler. We want to know what we're moving before we actually move it. So, uh, don't think we need anything in start. We'll keep it there anyway. We want to create a vector 3, call it pos input. So this will be the input received for position or moving. And vector 3 called rot input for rotation. We'll also add a bool called powered. We'll start that true. And a float called speed, which 150 I think was a good one. Right, so we don't need anything in start, so we're going to get rid of that. And in fact, we don't even need update. We can get rid of that. We're going to create a public void and call it move input. And we're going to go vec3, call this one move, vec3, rote, and bool powered. Just power, actually. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to go pos input equals move, rot input equals rote and powered equals power. Easy. Then from here we're going to create just a plain old um, actually move function. And I do rigid body dot add no add relative force. And what this will do is whatever the rotation it'll move forwards relative to that object's forward rather than world space. Add relative force pos input times speed because we want to actually move it according to our speed. Rigid body dot add relative torque. This is physics equivalent of rotation, and by making it relative, it means that rather than world space rotating, which is really irritating if you're in a first person perspective, this will. Uh, no matter which way you're facing, moving the mouse left will move it left, moving the mouse right will move it right, up and down will always be up and down. And we'll make this rot input. We won't make this by speed because that'll make it just go flying absolutely crazy. Um, so we've got this bool here, powered. What this is, is when this is true, we want to move. When this is false, we don't want to move. Or rather, we want to drift when it's false. We don't want to be able to add extra force. So what we'll do is we'll create an if statement, if powered. Now you can go equals true. Shortcut is actually just if powered. This automatically checks if it's true. If we're powered, then speed will equal 150. By altering the speed, rather than just actually including this entire thing, we can still receive rotation input but we won't be able to actually uh, add positional force so we can still look around while we're unpowered which is as a gameplay feature it's it's useful so we wanna 
change the speed. We also want to set the uh, ridge body dot drag to I think it's 10 we've got it set to. Else we want to set the speed to 0 and ridge body dot drag to 0. And this will just make it drift endlessly uh, until you repower. So this could be used if you have a, a weapon, say a, an EMP, and you hit a ship. It'll still be able to look around and shoot, but it won't be able to fly anywhere. It'll just continue drifting in whatever direction it was originally flying in. That seems good. Ah, oh, we got a call. Whoop. Actually move. Once it's adjusted its position and rotation input and powered, it'll then call actually move, which will then use those values that we've just received and stored. And that just about does it for the ship handler. So now open up player input. Nice blank one. Um, for this, we actually want to reference the ship handler script component. So we're going to do it like this. So this is like saying game object or transform or ridge body or whatever component. Because we're actually using a script as a component, we just use the script name, give it a name for it. And on start, we say s hand equals get component ship handler, and it's as easy as that. Now, we want to receive input in update. We don't want to send the input to the ship in update, though, because the ship is physics based. Physics run in the fixed update. So, was it 60 times a second? I think is the default. Um, so because we're not actually doing anything in the script in fixed update, we've got to actually handle that from player input. So we want to receive input in update and in void fixed update we want to send the input. And to do that we just go s and dot what's the function called? move input move input and we feed it we've got a three feed it three vec two vectors and a boolean so vector three move input vec three rot oop, rot input and bool powered equals true okay so first we want to take care of movement so we're going to create three float values one for moving forwards and backwards one for left and right and one for up and down so float h for horizontal equals input dot get axis raw because we don't want any of that silly lerping business uh, horizontal now this is a default uh, input value and because we don't actually have three to start off with, we're going to have to create one. So I'll show you how to do that in a sec. So we're going to just copy, paste, paste, um, horizontal, vertical, and up. Or I usually use U as my thing, as my value, but uh, you can use whatever. This will be vertical. This is where we run into the issue immediately. So we got no uh, positional on the Z axis, essentially. So we're going to just minimize that for a second, go to edit, project settings, and input. Now, just whoop. you can see we've got horizontal and vertical, and we've got mouse X and mouse Y. We actually need a Z value for both of these, so horizontal, vertical, and whatever the Z would be, mouse X, mouse Y, and ostensibly mouse Z. I think that's the right word. So we're going to duplicate the vertical here, just to make it nice and neat. And we want a nice sensible name for it. Um, so if we follow the naming convention, we've got horizontal, we've got vertical, so let's call this one Cecil. Cecil is a good name. Uh, negative button, we want... I like to use left control. Uh, this is positional, so left control means go down, space means go up. Space always means go up, um, but if you want to use something else for these, you can do so. So I'm going to go left CTRL, left control, and positive will be space. Get rid of these alt values because they'll mess us up. Now we do the same for mouse X and mouse Y. We want to duplicate mouse Y. 
Immediately we want to change mouse movement to keel button. And we're going to change the negative to E, positive to Q. This way Q and E will actually roll you left or right. And we're going to give a name here as well. Let's just go Steve for convenience. And that seems good. So we're going to open up our script again. So float U will now actually be Cecil. Cecil. There we go. And we want to create three more floats for the rotational input. So what I'm actually just going to do is I'm going to cheat here and get a bit of a bit error there. There we go. And I like to just put an R in front of all of these. So we got uh, mouse X, there's a space there, mouse Y, and Steve. So now that we've got this, these float values getting our input, we're going to put these into our vectors. So move input equals new vector 3, and we're going to give it an horizontal and we're actually going to put the up value here because that's the y-axis and then vertical and we're going to do the same for rot input equals new vector 3 and this one we're actually going to go vertical first then horizontal and then the z-axis and it'll be more clear why you can experiment with that if you want you can switch the values around but this is what actually works and then we want to change the power Value. So uh, if input dot vet get key down, I'm going to just go with a key code for here. Key code dot p for powered, and is it up there? Powered, and this is a shortcut to toggle, essentially a boolean. Powered equals not powered. So whatever the opposite value for powered is, and that's what it'll do. Then in fixed update we want to send the movement, so we'll send, we had the move input first, then rot input, then pow powered. And that seems like it, so we're going to go in here, make sure we've got no compile errors, good. We're going to click on ship and drag on player input and ship handler. We're going to actually save the scene too, so we're going to make a new folder called Scenes and call this Tutorial. Alright, so when we save, it'll save. On here, we've got our inputs. Yep, these all look like fine values. We don't want to use gravity, because otherwise it will just fall down. It's really messy. Okay, so now if we hit play... Now, we'll, the camera and the view is completely empty. Actually, here's what we've got to do first. Let's add the camera into the ship first and we'll zero in the position and rotation so the camera is looking outwards the same way the ship is looking so as the ship moves the camera will move and before we do anything because we won't actually be able to see any difference we're going to create a cube I'm going to duplicate it and again and again and we're just going to put a bunch of these cubes all around the place that should be enough actually we're going to hit play and if we move the mouse we have rotation. If we press Q and E, we have rolling. Now if we press WASD, we have standard first person movement. Control moves us down, space moves us up. And there you go, six degrees of freedom. Now, if you're not used to inverted, this might feel a little funny. So an easy way to fix that. One, we can go into edit project input, go into, I believe, Steve or mouse Y and just click invert Let's see if that fixes it actually yep it's now up is down up and down is down or alternatively you can come into the code here mouse y and just set it to a negative value and there you have it six degrees of freedom with this you can make games like descent or you can try your hand at a star citizen clone not a clone tribute uh, alternative game i guess if you want to see this tutorial continued or other tutorials of other kinds, just let me know in the comments below. Until next time, see ya.